You are about to travel back through deep time, millions and billions of years into the past, stopping along the way to follow the journey of life on Earth. Right now, it's the present day, and you are walking through a natural history museum to take a closer look at the places you'll visit. It's raining outside, and you hear it pattering against the glass ceiling. As you walk, the timber floorboards creak under your feet, and you have the museum mostly to yourself. You walk down through the exhibition hall on a journey backwards through time. This building was built several centuries ago, maybe two or three hundred years or so, and if we compare it to the context of our daily lives, it's pretty old. It's funny how long periods of time are so hard to imagine. Thinking back beyond a human lifetime by a few centuries already feels like another world. If we skip back a thousand years, or two thousand, or to the beginning of our current epoch, the Holocene, human history becomes an entirely new and otherworldly place of ancient technology, culture, and way of life. But while a few centuries are certainly a long measure of time, it's now time to mentally recalibrate what a long time really means. As you step into the Pleistocene exhibit, the present day suddenly flashes into at least hundreds of thousands of years ago. It's the Ice Age. The skeleton of a woolly mammoth rises up in front of you, defending itself from a leaping, saber-toothed cat. There are glass displays on each side, with napped stone tools, polished hand axes, and carved bone ornaments created by early humans. Even the Pleistocene is relatively recent on this journey. The Pleistocene might as well be yesterday in the context of geologic time. As you keep walking, the appropriate currency becomes millions of years, a thousand thousand years, enough time for continents to form, mountains to erode, and new species to evolve. As you walk backwards through time, you admire a huge fossil of a glyptodon shell, a giant extinct armadillo. Nearby is the terrifying beak of a carnivorous forest rachid, a so-called terror bird called Kalenkin from the Miocene. A model of Anthropornis, a penguin as tall as a human, catches your eye as you wander past. You are carrying a cup of coffee, and you take a sip. The milk comes from a cow, a ruminant from the family Bovinite that first appeared in the Miocene. The coffee beans come from the coffea plant, an angiosperm from the Rubiaceae family that first evolved in the Eocene. The building itself is also made of Eocene limestone, and when you look closely, you still see some tiny shelled imprints embedded in the walls. Now, it's the Paleocene exhibit, often overlooked as a slice of time between the dinosaurs and the Ice Age. You walk past a case with a tiny, delicate skeleton of an ancient mammal called Plesiodapus. It's a survivor, a genus that appeared after the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs and carried on the mammal lineage. You enter a new room, and you're in the Mesozoic section. An impressive Diplodocus skeleton leans way over your head, next to a Stegosaurus with its unmistakable plates along its back, and an Allosaurus, one of the most iconic predators of the Jurassic. You wander past displays showing the incredible teeth of Cretaceous crocodilians, and you marvel at the Triassic ichthyosaurs, marine reptiles as big as whales. Before you know it, the Mesozoic is over, and you're further back in the late Paleozoic era, a lost world of early tetrapods, the Temnospondyls, Sauropsids, and Synapsids. You finish your coffee and search for a bin. The paper of your cup is made with coniferous wood, a type of plant that first appeared on Earth in late Carboniferous fossil deposits, the same time that forests of Lepidodendron and Calamites trees grew and died, forming peat and eventually coal and oil, the very same fossil deposits which we now extract, refine and turn into things like the plastic of the lid and the lining of the coffee cups. The Paleozoic oceans are represented by shelled organisms in display cases, and fossils of ammonites and trilobites. 
On one wall is a reconstruction of a Cambrian ocean where early life was organising into some of the very first ecosystems. As the exhibition comes to an end, the fossils become very abstract. The animals that lived beyond the Cambrian, creatures like Dickinsonia, Aspidella and Charnia, are little more than oval shaped impressions in the stone. Now it's time for your own temporal journey, a journey to these prehistoric worlds to see what they might have been like. Thanks to the efforts of countless paleontologists, geologists and scientists over the centuries, we know so much about the history of Earth through the fog of deep time. By reading journal publications, books and other sources, with the help of original paleo art and a little bit of imagination, we can start to form pictures of these amazing lost worlds. You stop in the geology exhibit in front of a tiny red stone in a mineral case. It's a zircon. This tiny crystal comes from your first destination on this adventure. It's the furthest possible eon from now. The place and time where it all started. You are going to the Hadean Eon. If you're interested in exploring the worlds of deep time, make sure to like and subscribe.